Divine Truth Assistance Group. Group Assistance Sessions, Putting Principles of Divine Truth into Action. This recording is from the Understanding God's Loving Laws group and is part of an Education in Love series. In the welcome and housekeeping presentation, Mary welcomes the participants to the assistance group and outlines the general plan for the program, along with providing some general principles for participants to follow. Recorded on the 18th of November, 2016, in Newseville, Queensland, Australia. Well, it's nice to see you all. Yeah, <laughs> a bit uncertain. We saw you all at the door. You're a bit, lots of nervous, nervous people tonight. Yeah. yeah. Bit, uh... why, you, why do you think you're all so nervous? <laughs> Maybe it's because well, I've got planned for you. <laughs> 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 yep. In fact, we do have an addition to the program tonight. So I'll be doing housekeeping with you and then Jesus will come up and do a special unannounced presentation to give you all the opportunity to have a little bit of a look so at the attractions you're all nervous about that. Yeah, that are happening in this group already. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. then and then he'll finish off the night with his regular scheduled talk. Yeah. Yeah. So we might just go a little bit over time tonight yeah. by about 10 minutes or so. But I'll, I'll fly through the housekeeping and hopefully make up a bit of time. So, yeah. yeah. Good to see you all. It's lovely to see you all. Yeah. yeah. It's been a while since for, for many of us. Some of us only a few months. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But some of you have come a long way. It's, it's lovely. Yeah. yeah. So where are we from? We've got some from Spain. Hand yeah. up Spain. Yep. Um, <laughs> England. Hand up England. Yeah, USA, hand up USA, so mm. a few from USA. Now, um, where else uh, have we got? Where, someone from, is it Russia? Yes. 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 Yeah. And really this Pierre's from New Caledonia, I suppose, aren't you, Pierre? Yeah. <laughs> so that's, yeah. yeah. Now, where else are we from? Any any others? Any other overseas? Oh, oh yeah, Hong Kong. Hong Kong, yeah. yeah. Hong Kong. Yeah. You, you two are uh, so... Sweden. Sweden. You two are so regular, we just... You, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sweden, so... <laughs> Where else? Portugal. 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 Oh, Rui, yeah, yeah, of course. Rui, of course. Uh, NZ. Yeah. And yeah. New Zealand, of New course. New Zealand. Can't forget Nicholas. New Zealand. Nicholas. France. France. Yeah, there we go. Welcome. Welcome, yeah. everyone. Yeah. I suppose, I suppose we've got to include Barbados, do we haven't? Yeah, of That's course, very quietly sitting the there. tiny little island in the Caribbean. Yeah. And... Um, yeah, so there's quite a few visitors from overseas here today. Yeah. Yeah, welcome. Hopefully you'll have the chance to get to know each other a bit as well. Yeah. 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 All, right, all right, I'm going to let, let me be. Yeah. I just wanted to say hello to you, that's all. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So we've said welcome. This is our third assistance group in the Education in Love series. And what I'm going to do is just run you through some of the logistics of what's going to happen in the room, how it's all going to run this week, and um, then I'm going to talk to you about some of the issues in love involved with the logistics. So, as I said, I've only got um, 30 to 40 minutes, and I usually have 50, so we'll be flying through. All right. As we've said, it's our pleasure to see you, and Jesus and I will be sharing the presentation of this group. We've got a technical team with us this week, so a lot of you might have already met Lena and Igor. They do our videoing and video editing and production. And we've got Kelly and Cornelius on cameras. And Eloisa, who you met at the door, is going to be filling in on one of the cameras. She did the camera where Kelly is doing the camera this week. Yeah, so this is everyone. Now, Jesus and I present, have prepared all of the sessions that you're going to hear, and you would have read already in your outlines. It took quite a long time. It took Jesus about 500 hours in all to prepare this material, um, and we've had to actually cut down a lot of what uh, we're going to be able to share, because if you've seen in your outlines, there's a, there's a real lot that's covered in there, isn't there? So, all right. We wanted to remind you guys of some choices that you have this week. So you have a choice to come and gain a better education about love. 
That's the whole idea of this series. And this week, there is a lot you'll learn about the actual nature of love, the qualities of love, if, if, you, if you decide to, that is. It's a choice. You have the choice to practice principles that you've already heard about in previous groups. So humility, truth, faith, action, all of emotion, all of these desirous things you can put into practice this week and you'll have a good time. You have the choice to meet each other, as we've mentioned, and to engage these sessions with your heart. and to love the venue, the recording, others, yourself, and the presenters. And I'll talk more about that as I go through this material. Okay, the format for this week. I'll just pop it all up there. There we go. 34 hours in total that we'll be talking to you. And the week is split up into three distinct sessions. The main focus, as I've said, is understanding God's loving laws. But each two-day session, will focus on a certain area, a certain number of principles. In total, we'll be covering 16 principles with you, and they're grouped together and they build upon each other. Um, yep, we have a break day, got a couple of break days in there for you to get to the beach and, and do your homework. You'll have homework at the end of each session. All right. Now, these things are really important. Please make sure that you're here well in advance of each presentation starting. There'll be music played to signal either the start of the day or the end of the break. You heard tonight we played a piece of music that was to let you know we're about to start and that'll happen each time we're about to start. We won't wait uh, to start any presentations for you to get in the door and it is an issue of love for you to, for you to be here on time. Your break times are going to vary, uh, but generally your toilet breaks are 10 minutes and your lunch break is half an hour each, each day. Okay. Your start times vary a little bit as well, so make sure you check on your timetable. You'll see tomorrow we start at 10.30 and the second day of each session we start at 11. All right. Uh, in previous groups, we've had a music program on your days off. Uh, Kate and Fabio were donating their time to play some music for you. That's actually cancelled this, this group for a variety of reasons that we don't need to go into, but um, it was a lovely gift that they offered, but not this time. If you're staying on site, obviously you have free use of all of the facilities here at Ivory Palms, but even if you're off site, the resort has said that you're free to use the pools, the tennis courts or whatever. Um, while you're here, which is really lovely of them. Okay. Um, in the lunch breaks, people have been sitting out here in the cafe area where a lot of you ate just before you came in. That's totally fine, but you need to make sure you're using the correct bins. Last week we had a problem with an ice bucket being used as a bin, which caused a big smelly mess. So um, if, as you go out there, if you haven't already been out there, um, there's a little pizza bar area where there's a pizza oven. Behind that bar, there's a big bin with a plastic lining. That's the bin to use. So nothing else, nothing resembling a silver drum, anything like that. <laughs> Don't go near that one, OK? Um, and it, for the toilets, your access to the toilets is through that little cafe area and the toilets are um, just right here, actually, um, but off to your right once you're in the cafe area. Has everyone sort of... We, Come familiar with that? Awesome. All right. Now, um, we offer a service to copy hard disk drives with all of our data on it um, to everyone who's here. So some of you might have brought your hard disks or you can purchase a hard disk drive. It needs to be two terabytes in size, not smaller, to fit everything on. Um, if you'd like to have that done, you can put the hard disk to be copied on the table where Eloisa greeted you th this evening, where your name tags are. You've all got name tags and as you leave the room at the end of the night, if you can put your name tags back on that table and any hard disk drives you want copied, there's a little sign there that says hard disk drive copying. If you leave it there, then we'll collect it at the end of each day, do the copying and you'll be able to collect your hard disk drives from the opposite table where the donation boxes are. Um, yep. Uh, you need to label the drive with your name. 
clearly and what type of computer you have. So whether it's a Mac or a PC, because that affects how we copy things. What you get on the drive is actually a fully offline copy of our website. That's, so that means that you can load the website and all of the links that are clickable online that take you to the various documents and videos, they're all there and they work offline. So the data's there offline and the website's there offline. If you need more information about that, there's a section on our website that explains how to use the drive completely. But that's the basics. Okay, everyone all right with that? Yep. All right. Now, I don't know if there's anyone here with kids this week, is there? Yep, just Laura and Fab. You know the drill by now. Just to be responsible for your kids and where they are at all times and make sure they're supervised. Yeah. Okie doke. All right. By now, you've probably figured out we record everything that we do. <laughs> and um, there's a lot of cameras in this room, you'll see. There's one, two, three, four, where Lena is, five, six. If you can just be conscious of the cameras, and especially these front four, if, make sure you're not walking in front of them. Because obviously, the minute you walk in front of them, it messes up the whole um, recording and we can't see what's actually going on in the room. The other two are not as important. They're up higher and they're not used as much, but these four are very important. And what is actually happening is that there's a live feed of all or six, actually, cameras got streaming over to Igor, and he is switching between them as it happens, so that there's one output. For this reason, it's really important not to disturb the camera operators when they're doing their job. Lena's also doing a number of jobs there. She's operating two cameras and tagging everything that we're doing, which is creating chapters for all of our videos. Um, so there's a lot of things that we're doing to continually improve the production, but it's very important that you don't interfere with these guys while they're doing their job. So if you can just be aware of that, and also not to be having big, loud conversations uh, while the presenter's speaking or, or in their ear or, or whatever, just, just to basically respect what's going on. Okay, doll. Now, just explain the procedure that we have in place for microphones. So all throughout these, this week, you'll have the opportunity to ask questions. And what we've implemented in other groups is that there's basically a roster between all of you that you take turns managing the microphone for one, uh, for one session, if you like. And you'll see about three quarters of the way back the room, there's two allocated chairs. And on the back, it says microphone runner. It's important to leave those, yep, a number of you walked straight in, didn't see it and covered it over. Alex, I think you covered over even the sign, yep. Um, so the key thing is, it's all right, I will explain it now. Um, <laughs> the key thing is to leave those seats empty and then whoever's turn it is to use the microphone during that particular um, presentation, they can leave their seat that they have for the day leave it empty and go and sit in that seat while they're running the microphone. Does that make sense? Yeah. What we're going to do, there's a list with Igor of all of your names on it in alphabetical order. And basically, um, you're just going to take it in turns. He'll let you know at the, in the break before... So we're going to change mic runners every break. So it, in the break, before it's your turn, he'll let you know it's your turn. So don't need to stress out too much. There's a system in place. And if you feel stressed, it's a great opportunity just to feel, oh, what's happening? When's it going to be my go? Oh, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, <laughs> rather than hassling out Igor about, when is it my go? When is it my go? Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, now, mic runners, this is valuable equipment. So please take care of it when you're handling it. Don't bash it on your leg, it's on all the time. So, and if you decide to talk to your partner, oh, did you hear what he just said? It'll come through the microphone as well. So just be conscious of, and present with what you're doing. Uh, it's only one session that each of you have to do, one small presentation of an hour, 
hour and 20 maximum that you'll, that you'll be handling it. And if you can be attentive to what's happening on the room, it's your chance to give a gift to everyone else who's in attendance. So if you can be aware during that time. And when someone raises their hand, you wait for the presenter to indicate that they would like to hear from that person because sometimes there's a number of hands raised. As soon as they do, you make your way making sure you don't step in front of cameras. So you, you're down low when you're in front of Lena here. Um, and just pass the microphone to that person uh, as unobtrusively as you can. And sometimes someone might pass it along for you or whatever. But um, yeah, just make sure they're indicated before you do any passing. Now, when you get the microphone to ask your question, because it's all about questions in this group, not so much comments. So when you get the microphone to ask your question, it's important to hold it correctly. So you're going to hold it here, not out here, not up there, not down there, not over there. A lot of people get excited and then forget that they're holding the microphone. We know what it's like, but it is an issue of love to, to really, we're giving you the direction if you can please be conscious of that. So hold it about here at an angle so it catches your voice. Is that clear to everyone? Yep. In addition, if you are sitting behind the third row, so Eloisa, Eloisa and Sky just here and here are in the third row, anyone behind them who asks the question, you need to stand to ask your question. And that's just because it makes it much easier for the cameras to see. Okay? All right. Now, I'll just check out. Yep. Also, please don't hide from the camera. By being here, you've agreed. You've agreed to be videoed. If you're not happy to video, be videoed, you need to go home and watch it on YouTube. So, <laughs> you know, but a lot of people do this thing, they go, yeah, I'm okay to be videoed, but I don't want to talk like this. <laughs> you know, that's not really honouring your agreement. Okay, so if you can be conscious of that. All right. Okie dog. Jesus and I, especially Jesus, is tomorrow he's going to be speaking for seven hours non-stop. But we speak a lot in a day and we're managing a lot in the room in the day. So if you can please be conscious of not taking up more of our time, our time our, outside of the time that we're actually presenting. We need to rest and be in the right space also to present this material to you guys. So if you can respect that, that's a, an issue of love towards us. Um, the question and answer sessions in this group are going to be about the principles that we are teaching you about. So it's not a time for personal questions and there's no personal feedback sessions in this group. Um, and please make sure you make your way outside of the venue. It's cool if you want to hang out together and chat, but just make sure you do it outside of the room at the end of each day because there's a number of jobs that we all have to get done before we can leave the room each day. And if there's a lot of people milling around, that's quite tricky. Okay. Please arrive on time for each session. We've mentioned that. So, you guys, it's important to be loving to each other. I'm just going to start flying through some of these things. If we find that you are not, then we're going to address it with you and we will ask you to leave. Same goes with the way you treat our volunteers. These people are giving their time for free and if we find people are being annoying, harassing, generally unloving in any way, we will address it immediately and ask you to leave. All right. I really need to fly through this stuff now, guys. It's a big problem if you're not on time for the presentations. If you miss a presentation, it's an indication of the lack of love and really respect for the gift that you're being offered. It's a big problem with ignoring what we ask you to do. Um, this has been historically a problem throughout the previous groups, and we've, as you're going to learn, we have a much stronger stance on this this time. You know, you, these things that I'm got running through with you right now, it's important that you remember them. You've got them in an outline and it's not a good use of our time and it's not loving towards us that we continually have to remind people about those things. Okay. We're going to be, as I've just said, we're going to be addressing all issues of love with you pretty upfront this time. <laughs> Very upfront, in fact, and so we feel it's time. We've we've matured enough, and it's time to really get get serious about that. Okay, you'll find water at the back of the room, 
that's our gift to you f to drink while you're here in the room. Please make your own arrangements for water that you drink outside of the sessions. Um, yeah, that's just for your personal use while you're here. And it's very important that you've pre-read your outlines and that you have access to them this week. Has everyone pre-read their outlines? Yeah, yeah, good. All right. Just finally on these issues of love, the last group found that some of the content that we present, it's challenging. It will challenge the error within you. There's a lot of things that are disagreeing with this, with this material. So some people found it was difficult to stay present, some people went to sleep, some people found that they're off with the fairies suddenly or that they got quite spirit influenced. So some tips from other people who were here last time were to breathe Breathe into your belly if you notice that happening. Uh, remember, you can always do that. Let the emotion that's being confronted within you be identified by you. And instead of trying to keep up with everything that's happening, just sit with that and see if you can connect to that. That really helps. Drinking lots of water also was something that people found helpful. So, yeah. OK. I don't remember. All right. Now, this is really important. We have a whole new procedure for questions in this group. So basically, um, you're going to have the opportunity to write down your questions before each Q&A session. You'll have noticed in your timetable there's a presentation and a Q&A session. What we have at the back of the room is five folders, and in each folder there's a sheet for each Q&A session that we're going to hold for each presentation, in fact, that's being held. So the first one is fun tomorrow's fundamental facts, and you, have, you need to write your name and your question here in the, in the sheet. What will happen is Jesus will have the opportunity to see these sheets before the Q&A session. So while we're still happy to have spontaneous questions, you may find that he takes the whole Q&A just saying, OK, Laura, you had this question, microphone there, and indicates things that way. The benefit of this is we get to answer some very good quality questions and it also causes you to think and be clear and concise about what it is you want to know ahead of time. So this is also why it's important to pre-read your outlines so you have some idea of what's coming. But you'll be able to enter the room half an hour before we start each day just to write questions and also in the breaks um, you can write down questions. Does that sound clear? Now, this is the types of questions that we would like to be hearing from you guys. These are clarifying questions based on what you've already heard. So, are you saying this? You know, what did you mean when you said that? I don't understand this thing that you just presented. Why is such and such so important? What is the meaning of or the definition of or how does such and such happen? These are, if you think about those types of questions, they're very clarifying, you're trying to grasp concepts. And these are the kind of questions that we want to hear from you. We also want to hear questions that are about the material that's already been presented or material that's in your outlines. So it's not about going off on a tangent. OK. Sound all right? Here's your questions. Okie doke. Alrighty. This is really important that often what we're finding is that we give you guys a lot of instructions about conduct in the room, about how to ask questions, how to use microphones, but it's very often ignored. And some of you feel a little bit cheeky about it, like you can get away with it or make a little joke of it or, or you know, it's not really taken very seriously. But actually what's happening is you're actually desiring to sin. You're not, you're not wanting to address the sin that is involved when you ignore someone else's instructions and requests of you, loving requests. And it affects other people, not just the presenters and not just yourself. So we don't want to support you in that stance anymore. And Jesus is going to speak a lot more to you guys about that in his next presentation. All right. I'm just going to fly through a couple of these. Hopefully you've all read these in your outline where we talked about the unloving attitudes that we're seeing and what would be the loving response that we, that we would love to see, but what anyone who is loving would do, or the loving attitude. So the first one is about 
not preparing and just relying on us as presenters to take you from the very basic, absolutely zero amount of knowledge all the way to full knowledge without you really doing much to be responsible for your own learning. And this is about a lack of personal responsibility and a lack of awareness, really, of the importance of what it is we're attempting to teach. Obviously, the loving thing to do would be to examine your outlines before you come each day, think about any questions that you have, think about things that you're feeling stuck on, that can be the basis of questions for you, for you to clarify, and prepare your questions in advance, and prepare to have this seeking attitude in your heart. Okay. The next one is about personal statements. A lot of you wish to make a huge, long, big story of all the personal statements before you get to the question. Oh, I've just realised this and that reminded me of da-da-da, and, and then you have your question. Now, that is actually putting an imposition on everyone else in the group to listen to your personal stories, and it's not a loving attitude. So, it's imposing yourself, as we've said here, upon others. So, the loving attitude is to just ask your question straight up. Be clear about what it is you want to know before you start speaking. Another one, not diligent in defining your questions. Hopefully, our new system here is going to help you with defining your questions. But even if you are just putting up your hand spontaneously, because you're still able to do that, it's very important that you've defined your question in your notebook in front of you before you do that, to, to make sure you're clear on what it is you want to know. Yeah. A lot of you guys say whatever pops into your head and there's this lovely thing that happens where Jesus can actually understand without you even clearly saying what you actually want to know. Have you noticed? <laughs> and what that teaches us is that Jesus is a very open soul who's very sensitive emotionally and can feel people's emotions. What it doesn't do is teach us anything about being responsible for asking our own questions. And that's what we'd like to encourage in you. And in fact, we're going to really enforce with you this week. All right. It wastes time. It also means you're quite open to spirits and um, it often takes us off in a tangent and that's not very loving to everyone else. So please prepare your questions in advance and ensure they're clearly stated and this means that we're not wasting time. All right. Okie dog. I might just skip over this one, although it's quite important when you start to argue with the, with the answer to your question um, before it's even finished. A lot of you think, no, no, he's going on, he doesn't get what I'm saying, I need to say, tell him again, without realising that he does get what you say, he's, you're saying, but there's something that you think you know that you don't know that needs to be restated. So this is, this is really important. Someone's giving you their time for free to help you understand and learn something. If you have an attitude of love towards that person giving the gift, you'll listen, you'll listen. And if you truly want to understand, you'll also listen. What I find is often when we want to hold on to our error-based ideas and opinions, then we argue. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to skip this one because we've talked about the microphone use. All right. From now on, this is what's going to happen in our groups. We will immediately stop and remove the microphone from any person being unloving. We're not going to explain that decision because we feel we've just explained why it's going to happen. Um, <laughs> if you then argue with us removing the microphone, then we'll not just remove the microphone, we'll remove you. <laughs> um, this is loving not just towards us, but especially towards everyone else who's, who's present. We lose a lot of time in presentations correcting people's behaviour or shutting down their addictions. Jesus did a little experiment when he was going through the previous um, Group 2 Q&A sessions and he measured the amount of time that was wasted either in personal stories, in correcting people on their microphone use and it was, a hu it was 10 minutes, was it, babe? 5 to 10 minutes? Yeah, it was, it was 10 minutes every single Q&A. Ten minutes every Q and A. Mm. Now, in this in this group, some of your Q and A's only last twenty minutes, so it would be half of the time in just correcting. Now, if you think about that in terms of like 
other people's access to this material, your later access to more material, the amount he can actually share with you guys if, it's conti if he's continually having to waste time correcting things. It's, it's actually a really poor economy, and you'll learn more about the economy principle this week. Yeah. All right. We're not going to explain ourselves, as I mentioned. This is our explanation of ourselves. So it's another waste of time to then have to explain the issues of love that we find we're constantly repeating. Uh, so it's time for action. Yeah. And we'll only respond to those people who have a sincere desire to love. And as Jesus and I were saying this afternoon, it's not a matter of each of us having issues or addictions. The issue is, is there a desire to deal with those issues or to, acknowledge, to, to be humble about those issues? If there's an attitude of humility and a desire to change, that's no problem with us. But what we reflected on in preparing this group is that there's a lot of ongoing behaviour that demonstrates a lack of that desire, and that's what we need to address. All right. We're only going to be talking and answering questions about the actual material that we're covering in this group, and we'll only accept questions about the main presentation. So, uh, as you'll see on this list, on these uh, sheets, there's a the name of the talk at the top and the bottom, your question needs to relate to the material in that talk. Okay. All right. <laughs> and after all that, just relax. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, guys, it, last week was just a blast for me. It was so much fun. These principles are amazing. And if you can just relax, be yourself and... Remember why you're here is to gain an education in love. Then I think you'll get a lot from it. But we're going to be firm with you at the same time. It's, it's loving. <laughs> All right. And if you can, as I said, have this general goal to participate fully, this, this brings a lot to your own learning. If you sit back and just reserved in sitting in fear, you don't learn as much or gain as much from the experience as I know a lot of you have learned already. Um, all right. And please check your outlines, as I've said, and prepare your questions before each day. The door will open. So tomorrow we start at 10.30. The door will be open at 10. So you have the opportunity to come in and write your questions down. And there's, there's a sheet, as I said, for every single talk um, in the whole week. So you can write questions about any talk at any time on those sheets. All right. Well... Welcome, guys. I've made it through in 33 minutes. <laughs> the session that we'll be covering with you in the next two days is called Foundation Principles. Um, and Jesus is going to come up now and talk to you about enforcing love and truth. <laughs>